guys, don't forget to check out Doom Kicker on Indiegogo now for a limited time with exciting perks like exclusive prints and a special Mike S. Miller cover. Back now only on Indiegogo. Hey, hey, guys, if you are enjoying the content here on the Jerkmonger Show, be sure to subscribe, like this video, and please share. Thanks. What's up? What's up, everybody? Welcome one, welcome all to the Jerkmonger Show coming at you live from Tampa, Florida. I am your host, the Jerkmonger, sometimes called Elliot. It depends on which part of the country you're from. What's happening, everybody? I just want to stop in real quick and give you guys a big hello from the Southeast. I want to thank you guys for uh, supporting me. I'm getting, I'm still getting some sales trickling in on Doom Kicker. I want to thank you for that. I want to thank you guys for hanging in there with me. And even though I've been incognito, that means I haven't been broadcasting lately. Uh, uh, to be honest, I've been busy. I've been busy doing all kinds of stuff. The uh, time of the year is rough, uh, rougher than I thought it would be, but it is what it is. Uh, and uh, I also have been dealing with a bunch of sick people in my house and everybody's sick and this has been crazy that we got the flu type A. I didn't get the flu shot. Everybody says, get the flu shot. My doc, my kid's doctor says, get the flu shot. I don't like to get the flu shot. I don't like the flu shot because I don't want to get sick. I don't want to get sick because I don't want to stop working. But I didn't get sick anyway because I got other problems. You know what I'm saying? Oh, the dogs are barking. Sorry about that. Anyway, guys, I want to thank you guys for hanging out with me. I want to appreciate you uh, with a couple of things I'm going to do tonight. Uh, so I don't want to spend too much time online because I'm trying to really restrict how much time I spend on here and make when I come on here matter. So I want to thank everybody so far. Arthur Brown, the uncanny Kodiak. Gave me a fantastic, look at that blurb. Hank is a small town security guard who stands in the way of a supernatural onslaught. Enter the Doom Kicker. That's perfect, Arthur. That is perfect. I love it. Uh, we got uh, Slacker Highs in the house. I don't like the flu shot either. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it. Dark Admiral March, what's going on? We got Epic Trilogy. He said hello earlier. Trash Fire is here. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. And I double appreciate you. Thanks for coming in. Peter Sharon's in here somewhere, I think. Austin Marshall. We got Everborn asking people to smash the like button. That's right. Smash the like button if you guys want to. And uh, yeah, Shinto Ketchup is here, I think, somewhere. Lady Celtic Moon, I love you. Thank you so much. And Willio Art, oh man, hey man, what's going on? All right, so uh, again, I, as you can see, I haven't shaved my head in a while. It's been rough, it's been rough. And I haven't gotten sick yet as far as this other stuff, but it's getting ugly. Uh, I didn't write it. A lot of, uh, it's all you guys. I just copied and pasted. <laughs> well, thank you. Alfonso Prodi, what's up, baby? And then Shinto. All right, so uh, as I stated, I, I updated the title of this uh, Draw with Jerkmonger to say How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way uh, and Black Cherry. And I'm going to give you guys a, a quick hint about that in a second. Let me go ahead and show you guys... Uh, I, I recently went on eBay. Uh, this is something I've been really wanting to pick up for a long time. And I went ahead and bought this. I wanted to give you guys a quick look at Black Cherry by Doug Tenaple. Black Cherry. This is probably one of, probably my favorite Doug Tenaple book of all time. It's not, it's not the best, best quality. I mean, look at this. It's kind of look a chip. Off the t on the top of the cover. I don't like that. I don't like when my book's all beat up like that. But I tell you what, it, it was it's very rare I can find this book and I got it for a really good price. I really recommend you guys. It's a little bit on the vulgar side for some of you who may or may not. But let me read something to you guys. I want to read you guys the, the intro here by Doug uh, in a way that I thought was, this was powerful. This is why I love this. Um, and, uh, and this is what kind of like first really kind of change the way I look at anything and how to create stuff and write stuff and want to write anything anyway. Uh, this is the forward, author's forward. Um, some of this, let me make sure I can read. By the way, I, am I supposed to say this now? This video is not for children under 13 years old. It's not for children. Do I have to say that now? I don't know. 
Sakura says it's vulgar, just like Doug. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, let me read this to you. This is really, this kind of gives you some insight into Doug's personality. Some of you might be able, be a little confused about my decision to tell this story. My Christian readers will be puzzled about my choice of words and images. My anti-Catholic secularist readership might wonder why I'm tell, telling yet another story of faith. The answer to the Christian is easy. My characters tell the truth. Uh, I don't like moral stories where the characters live spotless lives. I should say that I don't believe them. Criminals don't talk like they are trying to keep from offending soccer moms. They use the F word a lot. And when I tell stories about the criminal underbelly of LA, I want to make ca rich characters who have the freedom to be as skanky <laughs> and as bad as they need to be. Not because it's good, but because it's true. I have a similar explanation for the anti-religious zealots. Stories just don't ring true to me when religion is deliberately edited out of every everyday, out of our everyday lives. And when Americans are surveyed, we consistently, overwhelmingly identify ourselves as Christian. Although, you know, I have to add a little asterisk there, you know. Do they, are they really? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I got it. I got it. I got it. I, got it. Uh, I mean, over 80% are self-proclaimed Christians and over 90% believe in God. So as I per peruse the great stories of the past from Chaucer to Dickens... From Pulp Fiction to Raider to the Lost Ark, we have a rich history of theolo theology mixed into our fiction. Modern stories have made sweeping efforts to hide or show embarrassment regarding our religious identity. I refuse, <laughs> this sounds like Doug, I refuse to bow to this pressure for the same reason I don't remove the F word from my dialogue, because my job is to tell the truth. Mobsters, strippers, gangbaggers, and priests have deep theological thoughts about their religious experience, and so do my characters. Enough of this chit-chat. Let's get on with the story. Doug to April, April 2nd, 2007. Uh, yeah, so this really kind of bugged me out when I first read it, and I was like, what is this? And this became my favorite of his books. And, um, you know, probably my top 10, top 10 books of all time. And uh, for this, for just I think because it set my brain free, if you will, this is a really important book, and uh, it it uh, I liked it. I li I'm glad that that I that he wrote this. I'm glad he drew this, and I'm glad I have it in my collection. Finally, after all this time, I the copy I read was a friend's copy, and I always swore I would get it, and never did. So I'm glad to get it. Uh, this was the this is previously published through Image Comics. You can find it on uh, Amazon, as well as on eBay, and uh, it's a pretty decent copy, except for the nick on top. I wonder if this was actually done on purpose. This almost looks like a bullet shot but i wish it was bigger it would have been cool um you could tell that doug was kind of he was really influenced by frank miller at some point uh, of the story maybe maybe not but some of the some of the the story elements seem to work that way it kind of works in his art style as a matter of fact um but also if you look closely i'm going to share this with you guys here in a second let me switch my camera over to make sure let's see bam all right uh, you could see here that his main character here, I think his name was Eddie, if I'm not mistaken. I have to read, re yeah, Ed. Uh, he kind of resembles one Hank from Doom Kicker. And I think that's that's funny because that's how much his work influenced me, especially back then. And, and you can see kind of where my head was at when I was doing it. And I hadn't even looked at this. This is my first time, well, I, I got it in the mail yesterday. This is my first time looking this. Uh, looking looking at this in all these years, and this is I, I just it just worked for me, and actually I feel like I'm just duplicating Hank. So, <laughs> except my Hank is a little bit chubbier. And here's the foreword I just read. Uh, you can see here if you guys are want to lock in there, but um, you know, great stuff, really really good stuff. Uh, an important important powerful weird story, just as much as anything. <sighs> A slimier version of Hank says Piroshi Paradox. That's right. Hey, Christina, how are you? Good to see Christina Lynn in the, in the chat. Willie O says, I'll be back. I'm driving. All right, Willie O, you be back. I'll be looking for you. Uh, picked that up recently, but I haven't read it yet, says Hiroshi. Yeah, well, you know what? Check it out, man. It's going to be good, good, good. All right. Speaking of Hank, speaking of Hank, I got a, I got a double whammy here for you guys. I got a double whammy. I have here a sketch I did recently. I was kind of warming up. This was a, a Hank warm-up sketch I did. I went ahead and signed it. I'm going to be doing a giveaway. 
uh, today. Um, so this will be part of the giveaway and we'll, we'll deal with all that, those details uh, here in a moment. But I just want to kind of let you guys see it and I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, that's that. And then here is an interesting new copy of a very popular and faint, well, I don't know if it's popular. I mean, it might still be popular, but it's uh, it's a very, it's an older book. It's been around for a while. This is How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way uh, by Stanley and John Buscema. You might notice that the color, oh man, my camera is doing that weird thing. I gotta, hold on, I gotta fix my camera. Uh, the color, as you can see, is blue, not white, as it's been popularized. Uh, or I guess it's popularized right, right there. Right, Antonio Cardenas, what's going on, baby? Uh, let me just adjust my camera here, guys. I don't want to. I don't want this to keep going bonkers on me. I'm afraid it's gonna mess up my my whole setup. But anyway, um, so I this is a brand new printing of this book, a brand new printing. And what I mean by that is that this is I just found it. If you guys are interested in all, I usually when I, whenever I've talked about art or how to teach art or or anything like that, I've often referred to this book. This is hands down probably one of the most important uh oh no i think i'm am i locking up i don't i don't think so um one of the most important how-to books that i ha probably have in my entire collection um so what i want to show you guys is kind of go through a little bit discuss some of the ideas that are expressed in the book basically kind of sell it to you it's although it's not my book to sell but it's uh i did find this copy however ironically um let's see what to say for the price um i'm not sure what the price is here because it doesn't read it but i got this at five below so if you have a budding artist in your family and you want something cool to give them something that's practically historical anymore in terms of comic books and drawing comic books and getting people into it uh this copy it was only five dollars at five below i don't know where else they sell it it doesn't matter five bucks at five below and i was super impressed so i don't know how long it's going to be available i'm thinking about buying a few more and doing this what i'm going to do after i go through this is i'm going to do a little a little sketch and maybe you know offer it some some form or fashion i don't know uh, let's see dark Emerald says I have a copy I bought mine at five below also right on so you got a good deal on this I I've purchased this book in, in multiple ways and multiple iterations um, I didn't have the hardcover there's a hardcover edition uh, supposedly I never got that one but uh, this one uh, this is the one I got I'm gonna go ahead and uh, kill my camera settings make sure because I think I'm starting to see potatoes on my screen potato potato anyway I hope you guys can still see it. All right, here we go. So the themes in this book that are covered are really interesting. One of the, my my criticisms about this book, um, well, I want to talk a little bit about my criticism. We'll talk a little bit about my the, the pros, what the, the pros and the cons. We're going to go through that a little bit. Um, one of my criticisms, however, uh, of the book, hold on a second here, folks. Okay, there we go. Is that it was written by. J mostly written by Stan Lee. There's a video you can find, you can actually find it here on YouTube, um, that covers a lot of the information as well. And I recommend, and you can also buy the, buy the same video on DVD. So I, I certainly recommend that to you guys. Um, but one of the things that I, I, I love about this book and what I love about the video is you get to really hear John Buscema speak about his work, which is different than listening to or reading uh, Stanley's words. Now, Stanley, there's a really interesting stuff where you can kind of see Stanley's kind of like irking John B. You know, it's really funny. Um, but, uh, uh, and if you've read this book as many times as I have, or if you've held it in your possession as long as I have, you'll find that very interesting. But anyway, How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way, uh, the video was much more informative because John was able to express his own ideas. Uh, and, and even though it was still a very, um, simple uh, uh expression of the ideas it still was very good especially if you're a learn if you're still trying to learn or you have any desire to to experiment in comic book or superhero art now that being said this book isn't really just a superhero book or that kind of thing it actually has a lot of information beyond that um and you can you can use the principles and the precepts expressed 
but you really have to know your stuff. You have to have, I, I stu- before, by the time I started to really understand what this book was about, I had already been studying other things and I read other books um, because there's so many gaps and, and that's one of the downsides to the book. However, tons of pictures and if you're sharp, if you're sharp and if you're the problem solver that an artist should be, you'll just kind of find a new way to look at this. Um, so let's just go through it real quick. Uh, how to draw comics the Marvel way. Uh, I'm not going to go through every page. I don't want to go through the whole copyright infringement stuff. I've always loved this illustration, man. Um, I love this. I love this. I don't want to draw like this anymore, but I love this. I, I, what I mean by that is I want to, I want, I'm, I'm working on a developing a style that I know I can do and, 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 and I'm, I'm, I'm able to crank it out. Uh, John was just such a master and I really bow to this work, but I'm telling you right now, this is a gorgeous piece of art and I love it. Uh, there's a few pieces in here. I love what he's, the way he starts off. He kind of, it starts off with just kind of explaining what are the different, what the different terminology is for comic books. Uh, as an as far as the publishing uh, end of comics, I think this is fantastic. Um, uh, Joe K says that video gives an idea of how spoiled we are today with YouTube interaction. Uh, that's true. That's true. Hiroshi Parrax says I love how effortless those complex wrinkles folds on the shirts look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So anyway, he goes through and talks about things like a. Hey, this is the uh, this is the first page of story with a large introductory illustration. It's called a splash page. You know, again, basic information, but if for young people or novice artists or people who have just coming into the game, you don't always have that information. So this is a perfect way for you to kind of get, dip your toe in the concepts and then explore from there. I will say this, man, of all the books that I have, this is the most important one. This is like the, to- the, the tombstone, the cornerstone of all this other stuff that I've ever learned. And this is, comes from here. So I, I'm glad I got this. Um, Again, he's going through all the different ideas. Chapter two goes into drawing things in three dimensions and perspective. Not quite perspective, but more like, you know, the shapes. The Because the, his whole system involved using cylinders, pyramids, sp- spheres, and cubes to create objects. And uh, here you can see some of that. Um, so most of, most of us who, who, if you've watched any of us drawing online, you've probably seen this sort of thing. So this is all really important information. Then he goes into perspective. And by the way, this is a challenging, challenging subject. I, 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 I recommend to all of you that you check out um, as many books as you can, read as much as you can on perspective. This is one of the most important categories. This is the one thing that I still to this day struggle with. Even though I understand it intellectually, Making that connection sometimes can be so challenging. And uh, I really recommend you guys spend some time studying the concept, studying the subject of perspective for uh, uh, one point perspective, two point perspective, three point perspective, curvy linear perspective. Just delve into that as much as you can so you can understand it, grasp it, and don't let it stop you. That's one of the challenges that I have that slows me down quite a bit is knowing what to draw and how to draw it. And I really recommend to you guys, for those of you who are interested in drawing comics, please spend some time drawing backgrounds. Draw city streets, draw buildings, draw trucks, draw whatever you can, draw it. Get familiar with those things so those become intuitive and not something you have to always be looking for reference for every time. That's what I love about John Buscema. He was, well, he, I know it for a fact that he used references, but he was fantastic, fantastic at doing this. and. Uh, and and he he did so much drawing that he could draw almost anything I, i've seen him do it so definitely recommend that look at the buildings and stuff like that uh also what i love to identify with this is just you know even though today we've kind of gotten to this world and time where we draw some of these things uh to like with tremendous detail one of my favorite things about looking at this work and then looking at some other artists um is the proper idea how proper way to consider and to use backgrounds in the first place and I gotta be honest with you I suck at it I, I, I don't I don't do that very well I'm a I'm a figure character guy always have been and I'm def one of the things I struggle with even through this book is like man how do I draw that car how do I draw that car in such a, even when I'm doing little sketches and thumbnails I can barely get it done right so I really want to encourage you guys to put that energy into doing 
those type of things. By the way, the more you learn about drawing anything, if you want to draw something that's steampunk, if you want to draw something that's futuristic, if you want to draw something that's prehistoric, what's great about this sort of uh, approach uh, and, and by drawing and practicing is that once you understand these rules, you can bend them, you can break them, and you'll realize they're all kind of the same. And once you have in your head what those different things are, man, it's just, you're just recalling it. So it's super important for you to study. Super, super important. And, I, and I'm telling you this. I'm, I mean, if you guys have sketchbooks, don't spend your time in your sketchbooks drawing Batman all the time. Don't do that. Don't, 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 no, no. That's a mistake. I draw Batman too much. I draw Batman with my eyes closed, but I struggle with cars. So like I said, my thumbnails suffer and, and all my ideas suffer. And so, yeah, the important thing is to tell the story. But you want it to look decent, you know, you know what I'm saying? Nobody, no, you, if you're going to go to a party, you want to dress right, you know what I'm saying? What, what good is it to go to the party and you look like a bum? I don't want to look like a bum. I want to look good. I want to look squared away. I want to look straight, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, you don't have to have the fanciest clothes, but you can keep it nice, and that's what I mean. That's what, that's what understanding your perspective does. It gives you a chance to really kind of get a grip on, on, uh, on ideas that you don't have to worry about in the future. You can just kind of glide through those a little more. All right. Uh, so anyway, this is this was a great section. Uh, let's talk about the human body. Uh, this is this is an interesting one. I I've referred to this quite a bit, especially since I've put a lot of energy into understanding how to draw the human figure. This section here is super critical as well, and this actually is covered very well by John Buscema uh, and uh, and Stan in this book. But to be honest, this right here is 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 something else. Um, I love I've always always think about this drawing whenever I think about the relationship between a hero and a normal man and I've always loved this 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 always pops in my head you know how would how would Dr. Doom stand and you kind of think of it like that you know that kind of stuff uh, this also covers an interesting thing that that troubled me for a long time is how to draw th thinking about drawing the figure these proportions on thick and bold figures that's not the same as your heroic slim figure see Notice he's drawing with, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six heads tall. And his cap, if I'm not mistaken, is the typical hero, which is, I think, eight and a half. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep, eight and a quarter, eight and a half. Uh, I think it's more like a quarter. That's your heroic proportions. You know, that's how they're supposed to be kind of tall. Let's see, this section was a, was a streamlined Loomis lesson. That's true, that's true. And yeah, you could definitely look at Loomis. If you want to take this further, thank you, Joe, for, for reminding us about that. Um, yes, heck, it is. This is the same one that I found in Five Below for $5. Go get it. Um, you know, uh, Loomis is a better read, but Loomis is the textbook. This is more like the uh, short summary version of that. And like I said, if you're sharp, you could, you could get away with this, but Loomis will take your brain to another level, and, and, and I love Loomis for that. I love this section here where it talks about drawing the figure in, in action, and I love that it shows that you don't have to stick with the. Once you get a good understanding of these of this these proportions, you can just draw loosely and kind of keep it going. I love that too. So for those of you who are interested in that as well, and that's again another iconic image, and I love it. I love it. I love it. All right. So uh, like I said, this is a, a, a full of great stuff, and like I said, I I. I mean, some of this, I some of I think people would say that some of this is dated. I understand that completely, but I would also say that the lessons you can learn in here and how you can apply it to anything, even if the 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 look is a little dated, the ideas of action, like you know, here you've got this guy's talking, and then here you have just a more interesting layout. It's the same kind of this guy's talking here to this guy. That's basic. This guy's leaning in now, and this guy's pushed off to the side. And he's he's it's not completely centered like this one is. You can see already that there's some improvement. There's this one, where the characters are just facing off in the panel, and then here's they're still facing off, but look how he's leaning in, and he's kind of st he's kind of back a little bit. That's an important important part of this. Um, so definitely a way to think. Look here, he's just kind of like, hey, look, I'm smoking a cigarette. A cigar, you know, he's like, now I'm smoking a cigar and the camera. So, think about guys like uh, what was the uh, Hitchcock, Alfred Hitchcock, how he would frame a shot. Definitely spend some time looking at Hitchcock movies and stop just looking at the movie just to get to be entertained. Get into the movie, 
to see how it's how the scenes are laid out and how the camera angles are used really important information um, this also goes into not just laying out your composition for your story again you can see a little more here about how that works um, but it also even discusses stuff like and you can actually see some of these these items in the printed books I, I don't know that they actually they might have a bibliography I don't remember that now I don't think it does um, but uh, how to draw a cover and even on inking and I think this is fantastic uh, again it's dated there are, there are newer books on stuff like this you can watch a lot of videos um, I learned from just doing it but if you need the principles and the ideas first that's how you could do it right so anyway that's the book, How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way. Uh, blue cover at five below for five bucks. Like I said, I don't know if this is like an outlet thing or if this is their deal to have a, a different copy. I noticed that the paper is a slightly different quality. It's a lot thinner. You can see through the, pa the pages to the next page. The original ones I had didn't have that. But suffice it to say that that's what you get for five bucks but it's the information is here you can also go and spend a little bit of money and get it digitally if you want to use it on your phone I have a digital copy myself that I keep with me in my iPad and on my phone just in case I ever need to hit you know check out something and, and reference something like that so anyway hope you guys enjoy that so what we're gonna do now I'm gonna do a little sketch in this book and then I'm gonna do a little a little giveaway so I don't know if you guys are here if you guys don't mind hitting that like button and also share this and let people know I'm about to do a giveaway one is a doom kicker sketch giveaway if you guys don't mind sharing that that'd be awesome to get people to remember that I'm still alive what are you gonna do and then the other thing I'm gonna do a quick little sketch here and draw in how to draw comics the Marvel way the question is do I draw on the inside page or on the inside cover I think I'll go with the page I think that's what I want to go with uh, so I'm going to do a little sketch for the next 10 minutes or so and see what we come up with and then go from there. Uh, Hiroshi says, uh, it, it show, or it shows up fairly often on, oh, at half price books. Yeah, I, I just, I've just never seen it for five bucks. So Matthew D. Rice says, Jerkmonger, how long are you keeping the on-demand store open? It's staying as open now for, uh, for a while longer. So it's, it's not, uh, it's not going to be, uh, anytime very soon, but I hesitate to give you guys a specific time frame because I'm trying to catch up and get some more work done to try to to make everything work out. So, um, yeah, let's try that. All right, let's go with that answer. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead. You still alive? Thank God. I thought I was going crazy. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm gonna. I'll be back eventually. Oh, the dog is here. Oh, my dog. Hey, hi, Mal. Molly, my dog is here. Um, what should I draw? Should I draw on this page or should I draw on this page is not gonna work. Let's see. What do you guys say? Uh do you guys do you guys wanna vote? I, I guess I can let you guys vote on what I draw in here. There's only thirty five of you. Uh Joe K says my my next favorite book is by Gary Martin, the art of comic book inking. I have the I had that also. Let me get my copy of that so I can share with you guys that part. And for that matter, I'll share this with you. And I'll share this with you. Uh, this and uh, I'll share this. While we're on the subject of other great books, uh, let me show you what I have here. A floating Batman with no background says one. <laughs> I'm trying to find the ch that cheddar just a few weeks more. Oh, thanks, Matthew. I appreciate that. Uh, it'll be open for a few more weeks at least, for sure. Uh, just don't draw that plastic surgery girl from the last... <laughs> Thank you, Roshi. That was quite the story, wasn't it? All right. I have a great book here. This is something that I think a lot of you could could definitely use. Ooh, a draw, Buscema style Conan. Ooh, I, like, I might do that. I might do that. This is DC Comics Guide to Digitally Drawing Comics. Now, I know a lot of you guys have, with all the access that we have online and on YouTube to all these different things, you don't really need this, but I really, um, I wanna challenge you guys to check out some information about how to get things done. And um, this is definitely, puts a lot of things in perspective if you haven't thought about it in a while. Uh, the importance, the use of digital 
tools in your produ production of comic books. So this is definitely was a very helpful guide to me. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't quite pertain to what, the way I'm working right now. Well, it does actually. I'm just using a different program that this one advocates. But uh, this one promotes Photoshop. I'm using Clip Studio. But actually, they both use layers and different things like that to, in the same way. Um, this is a good one. Uh, this one here is interesting. This is uh, the DC Comics Guide to Coloring and Lettering Comics. I got to be honest with you, um, this one's interesting enough, but it, it it's a very basic concept. This is one of those things where it's like, hey, uh, put one dot here, one dot there, and you and then you have a finished page. Like that's not quite doesn't help me as much, but um, but this is definitely has some good information and definitely uh, recommend for sure. It seems like these are great examples of different ideas on how to draw. I love lettering. I love, love lettering. Um, I love great letterers and I love people who know how to draw and use typography. It's fantastic. Um, I get really excited about about beautiful words uh, produced or, or written. Or not, not so much. I mean, I enjoy the content of the words, but I also enjoy the way they're drawn. So that's pretty fun for me. Um, definitely good stuff. Definitely stuff you can learn from. Also has a digital section. Uh, these two books, I got to be honest with you, I've, I've seldom used them, but they these ha en ended up coming with uh, discs in the back and some tutorials. These are good. This is Hi-Fi uh, Color for Comics and Master Digital Color. These are both both impact books. Um, they're actually really good. I have gone through them, but I haven't gone through them much. And that's mostly because I've been focusing on penciling and inking as my... Look at this. Look at this. Look how nasty that is. I love that. That's gorgeous. That's gorgeous. And it, and it covers some of the principles of, of computer coloring. So this is definitely a good read. Uh, again, there's tons of video. But one of the things I like about books um, is that in when you have a book as your tool, um, oh, okay, I have those two and vanishing points, says Joe K. I have vanishing point in, in digital. I don't have it uh, physical copy, but that's a great recommendation as well, Joe. Um, the reason why I definitely recommend books, well, there's a lot of stuff you can learn online. Sometimes the stuff you learn online it's hard to collect all the information together into one resource. What I love about books, if it's a good book, you'll get a lot of information in one source. And I think that's helpful. The problem is sometimes it's clunky and it's hard to carry. That's why I love digital libraries. But that's up to you guys. You guys can do whatever you want. Um, I don't I don't need these to be collected necessarily. I just these are, I don't want to buy them again. So I keep them in a library. But um, Try to find what you can and, and make that work. But this is a good good resource. Uh, this right here, I actually have another version, another one of these here. I have uh, framed ink, and this one helps me a lot too. Frame perspective. So this one is a great. These are two great books, but on perspective by Marcos Mateo Muster, uh, and this one also by the same author. Framed ink. This is goes heavily into ideas about just ways to compose. Got a composition. It says it here, drawing and composing a single image, you know, basics, and talks about how to lay things out. This is really, really important stuff. This is what separates the men from the boys, the the, the women from the girls, the the rats. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. This is really, really good stuff. John Malin, perspective is a myth. Only, only in certain countries, but in this one, it's true. Um, this this one here is super helpful as far as com composing your images, your layout, um, and then also in discussion on how to use shadows and, and spotting your blacks. And this right here is even better from this, uh, Shane Martin, bro. This is How to Draw Noir Comics. This is a great book. I love this book. Uh, another one of my favorite, favorite books. Um, and you can see a lot of interesting ideas on spotting of black. Um, just killer 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 stuff uh, stuff I really really enjoy so these are fantastic resources for you if you're someone that wants to explore these ideas more and you think you might need this I really recommend this to let this might be for some of you an advanced concept um, but if you're already drawing your figures and you got a good handle on your backgrounds and stuff like that the next thing is to figure and this also once you understand about spotting blacks you also figure out how to be more economical with your drawing which again I'm not that great at but this is super helpful and of course this is the edition that i have i think this is the second edition of the art of comic book inking by gary martin gary martin was a famous inker uh especially in the 80s and 90s and he worked over um, um steve rude on nexus uh one of my favorite inkers 
again it's a classic style not always a, a style that is necessary anymore but it's one that I lean on a little bit um, but what I like about this book there's a third edition out now on Amazon you can get I think it's coming out or it just came out I'm planning on picking that up also um, because there's new techniques digital techniques in that one but also what I love about these books if you need the practice and I almost hate to do it I haven't done it yet they come with inked or pencil blue line pencil pages in the back for you to practice on the downside is once you ink over it you've used up the board but this is fantastic I mean you can find this sort of stuff online as well what I love about this is this specific specific pieces of art um, I believe this one this edition has uh, the same as their first edition and a couple more images and then let me see what else is there here these are cool. A lot of ghosts. I wonder what, what their deal was with ghosts. Uh, let's see. Da -da 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 -da. Da -da 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 -da. Oh, yeah, this is nice. This is, uh, what's his name? The dude from uh, Dirty Pair and um, Empowered, his name. Yeah, nice a nice selection of, of uh, pencilers, uh, different styles. Oh, ho, ho, ho. speaking of Conan, Jack Kirby. Oh, 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 oh. And then we got, let's see, uh, da, da, da. oh, nice. Who is this? I think this is Jean Collin, I believe. I believe uh, on Conan. And then finally, uh, this is John B. S oh, look at that. This is beautiful. Adam Warren, that's right, that's right, that's right. Look at that. Look at that. Nuts. But loose. Very interesting. This John Buscema gave you the opportunity, if you're into inking, to express yourself in his pencils, uh, which was dangerous, because he would often determine if you were a good inker enough for him or not from that. But anyway, so there you go. Uh, How to draw comics tomorrow. This is a good starter set. Like I said, it's Christmas time coming, guys. You guys have special loved ones, young ones that are learning how to draw. These are great tools, not just for young ones, for yourselves. Um, how to draw Nora comics, framed ink, fantastic. This is one of my favorite books. Favorite books. Frame perspective one and two and uh, digital color master digital color and hi-fi they're both same authors uh, Brian and and Christy Miller we have DC comics guide to coloring and lettering which is an excellent resource and finally one of my favorites DC comics guide to digital digitally drawing comics like I guess that some of the information is not necessary some of you some of it is maybe old hat for some of you but for the rest of you who have never thought about it, who are like, man, I'm only old school, but you really say, you know, I only draw stuff so I can sell it. But the truth is you're just afraid to try it. Just give this a read. Give it a spin. Tell me what you think. Call it a day. All right. So back to the giveaway. So I have, watch them all. My dog is afraid it's raining out here and she thinks that she's going to hide with me and she's not going to do that. So here's one of the giveaways. Like I said, I'm giving away a sketch. Uh, this was a warm-up I did for one of my, my drawing sessions uh, in the book. And this is uh, Hank. Uh, I signed it. So I'll be doing a giveaway for that. So we'll see. And uh, we only got 38 people in here. So I was hoping for, for more so it was a little more fun. Unless you guys are just holding out because you don't want to share it with other people bunch of greedy people I swear anyway do you respond to emails Willio says uh, yes yes if you want to uh, by the way when we're done here I want to ask you guys to email me at uh, let's see here I don't have an email scored away in here so I have to come back to that but anyway I'll have you guys refer to me there and I'll, I'll give you guys the email for you to email to so you can contact me to give me your address once we do the giveaway the only thing I ask is if you're in another country that you help me out with shipping Otherwise, domestically, I'll cover shipping. Thank you, Christina. I appreciate it. All right. So I like the idea of a John Buscema-esque Conan. John Buscema-esque Conan. So we're going to do that now. Uh, thank you for sharing that, Jim O'Reilly. Uh, I do have a mailing list. You can contact me at Elliot at jerkmailinglist.com. I'm sorry. No, jerkmailinglist at gmail.com. That's how I have it. Um, so let me just make sure that's the right thing. I think that's the right thing. Anyway, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll go from there. Uh, Hiroshi, uh, Warren B says, Hiroshi, I have too many books. The only comic-related ones I properly read cover to cover are Understanding Comics. That's a good one. And the two Gary Martin inking books. 
check out the third one, Warren. Let's see how that goes. All right, so I'm going to draw. I'm going to draw an ink, and I'm going to give myself a few minutes here. Let's see. All right. Dun 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 dun. All right, I'm going to. I mean, I'm utilizing some of the ideas. Another artist that I learned from growing up. Um, other artists were Don Bluth. Um, he was a big deal to me as I was growing up. Uh, the, one of the Disney artists. Um, the guy that was responsible for some of the old ones like uh, Sword in the Stone and some other ones. Uh, Secret of Nim was his. The Dragon's Lair uh, games and Space Ace. Uh, that was a big deal to me. And uh, so that's why even though I learned a lot of comic art from John Buscema and some other guys like Jim Lee and such, I actually prefer that cartooning style a lot so you'll see that in my work as well uh willio says steve huston figures 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 drawing is an amazing book figure drawing steve huston is that what it is i never i've never heard of that one before so i'll have to look into that steve huston all right so i always kind of start off with the circular object i'm always thinking ahead i'm thinking about the the, the shape of the face and I always draw this. You guys have seen me. This is kind of what I do. Awful Redneck Gaming says, yeah, for sure. Those were great. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and what I like to do is prepare the, the upshot angle that I tend to draw a lot. Um, again, this some of this I learned from, from, from How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way. It was solidified there. I studied a lot of Alex Ross uh, poses, and also I learned a lot from animation. Uh, in particular, this book called the um, it was called the Art. I think it was the Art of the Prince of Egypt. There was some great section. It actually wasn't even the full book. It was like a little book. I forget, I have it somewhere around here. Um, oh, right here. Matter of fact, uh, it's called this is called the Prince of Egypt, uh, the movie scrapbook. Now, why this was important, because this kind of broke down for me, and I ended up seeing some of this in uh, J. Scott Campbell's book, uh, his sketchbook. And I realized that this was, if you want to know where I get the circle stuff from, this is kind of where it came from, where I started to kind of like, oh, that's how they do it. Oh, that's what happens there. Oh, that's how they, and it was just, it's just a, a, a tool that animators use in this particular animation. Um, and I love this particular drawing of Zipporah. Um, but it's only like a couple of pages, so I don't think it's necessary to have the whole book. The actual How to Draw the, the Art of book doesn't have that much information on this, although it's a very good book. Um, definitely recommend that. And uh, there's a couple other people I'll share with you. Um, this book here is great, too. Uh, Comic Relief and the Art of Chris Copeland. Chris Copeland is a friend of mine uh, out of California. Works for uh, well, he, did, he used to work for Warner Brothers. I think he's over at DreamWorks now. Uh, as an as a storyboard artist but what I like about this book is it kind of shows his work as well this was a Kickstarter book um, but you can follow him on Instagram and uh, other things he he worked a lot on the on some DC st um, I'm sorry uh, Marvel stuff as well doing the Marvel animations stuff uh, so he would see I know there was another artist I forget the man, my man's name but um, he did the sometimes they would cut to a shot that was a still shot. Oh, what's his name? I can't, it's, it's, his name escapes me now. But anyway, they all kind of have a similar style to their work. Um, really cool. And if you're interested in like action shots, it's great to look at animation stills or storyboards. Because uh, you get a lot of cool ideas about how to how to frame a, a, an action pose or something like that. But anyway, yeah, see, this kind of stuff is killer. Anyway, this guy's really good, and you can see he's imploring. He's imploring. He's employing a lot of these ideas of shapes in his work, um, and also that's this book. Let's this side. This book here is a little harder to get. Um, well, both of those are Genesis of Urbans. Urbans was a project uh, by this company called Steambot, Steambot which is a, a studio. Um, uh, I haven't seen the Prince of Egypt movie. Does it actually talk about God? Uh, it kind of does. It kind of does, Christina, in, a, in an interesting way. It's an old movie, though. It's like in the late 90s. 
Um, this right here is an interesting animation. Uh, it's only been shown as a like a like a quick short so far, but uh, there's great artwork here and great character designs and great ways to draw stuff. Yeah, this is the kind of stuff I usually get. I, I of all the kind of books that I collect, this is my favorite sort of book. This is something you have to get online. Um, you have to check out Urbans. It was, I think, a Kickstarter. I think. I mean, I think we can go to the website, the Steambot. I think you can go to this to the shop, and you can still purchase it. They think still had copies. Um, this is a very valuable book. Very, very valuable. Uh, Urbans. Cool typography, right? That could go on a shirt for me. But those are just some examples um, uh, of different, you know places to get ideas on drawing and then in more modern styles you know tough nerd toys what's going on uh all right jim o'reilly i'm gonna keep on drawing and hopefully it'll it'll be worth your review of the video later all right so conan sports a very beat up nose i always like to think that conan has been in a bunch of fights so he shouldn't be very perfect kind of the way that you would think Conan would be drawn by John Buscema. So I may not draw this exactly the way John Buscema draws, but I want to give it my best shot to draw it in a fun way. Um, at least in the spirit of the way Buscema would think, I guess. So Buscema always put a lot of high cheekbones on guys. Um, I kind of, I bet that Buscema was heavily influenced uh, by Frank Frazetta. While they may have been contemporaries, um, obviously I think Frank was the the you know the elder statesman I guess if you will he seemed like he was more you know more put together in his work and, and I just saw and it may have been that they came from different they both kind of were uh, drawing from the Brandywine people uh, the Brandywine studio and that had its own other level of stuff like that um, so anyway lots of lots of interesting ways and when you start studying art you start going it's really fun to kind of look at looking at for the heritage of an artist and figuring out what inspired them and why they draw the way they draw it kind of unlocks some ideas for you there all right so um here we go i'm going to also give him a bit of, of a, a bigger brow uh Bissema was known for drawing almost chromagnon brows on his guys especially guys like conan and brawlers should have bigger brows so then they look a little more beat up, a little more like like gorillas, if you will, you know. Um, uh, tough nerd toys. Is I, I I'm still waiting for a commission. You know, I send an email to your reps. I have a few logos drawn for my shows. Uh, uh, tough nerd, send me a message, man. I I wonder if you sent it to the right. Normally, Andy would have just gotten right on that. So uh, I'll I'll chat with him, but that doesn't sound like Andy would hold that back for me. Trust me. We got to make some money. All right, so I'm gonna kind of go with that look there. Can you guys see that? Okay, it looks looks better. It looks better on YouTube than it does on my other screen. All right, and now Conan has usually has like bangs, which has always bothered me. Ugh. A little, a little too, a little too feminine. But um, you know, I, I don't like how they've weakened him a bit over at Marvel. Why would you even use Conan in your regular stuff? Eh. It's not like he's even like Conan's not even like doesn't have any powers. Just a tough guy. Why would you make him an Avenger? That doesn't make any sense. That doesn't matter. I don't care. Anyway, so all right. And when I draw the pupils, I tend to kind of just, the iris and the pupil, I just kind of draw a little, little box. I learned that from George Tusca. Uh, I like the way he just kind of like throws down a thing. Um, uh, he says, wait, I thought he had a bowl cut. He has a bowl cut sometimes. It depends on who draws him. Um, he's, but even if he has a bowl cut, no, he can't have a bowl cut because he's got long hair. So the front is like cut, like bangs cut. It's weird. Like with a bowl, but just long. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Uh, let's see. Uh, Conan's the best Marvel properties. Superheroes are kind of boring. Ah, you know, sometimes, sometimes. I can see why you might say that. I'm a little bored with their superheroes too these days. 
Oh, doesn't matter. All right, so. Dun 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 dun. I also dig that they used. After all, I really feel like the the reality is that um, Jason Momoa played a better Conan than Arnold, but Arnold looked more like John Buscema's Conan, and that's why I've always loved Arnold more. Does that make sense? I like that. Uh, beep boop, Nasser. Nasser, what's up, man? What's up, baby? Thunder the Barbarian has a bowl cut. He kind of does. Yeah, he kind of does. He has a little He-Man cut going on, too. Bum, 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 bum. All right, so I did a decent little sketch here. Let's go ahead and ink this one up. So what am I going to use? Mm, I think I have ink in here. Let me just check. I haven't drawn a lot of... Yeah, I think I have ink in here. It looks filled. Let's try this. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do this part boom 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 ba, ba, ba. Bum, 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 bum. dun 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 all right, so I'm going to kind of, I'm using some of the techniques that uh, you will find in, in the in Gary Martin inking book. In there, I'm, I'm inking this portion of the artwork. So I'm going to be doing uh, some more, uh, some more. Uh, I don't know what I call them warm-ups, but I'm going to be doing some more drawings here and there. I'm going to be doing some auctioning in my own uh, here on my own channel um, from time to time. I know that some of you guys are exhausted from the holidays. I totally get that. So they're going to be inexpensive drawings here and there, most, mainly warm-ups like this, stuff like that. If you guys are interested at a very reasonable price, but. Uh, or we'll auction them or they'll be for sale um, but uh, just to try to help kind of lead into the next year um, I wasn't able to launch the book that I wanted to and I don't think it's a smart idea to launch anything uh, in January so I'll be doing something else sooner than later in the beginning of the year as soon as I public or I uh, set Doom Kicker free out of my universe into your hands. All right, so you can see I'm kind of doing a nice dark hair, dark eyed Conan. Bangs was a standard for Barbarian, lol, He Man, Thunder, Conan, Bruce Lee. <laughs> uh, can I show from my comic book, Tales from the Classroom, here? Check it out on IGG. Well, Microaggressor, you just did. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. Dun, 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 dun. Now, in my brain, Conan was blue eyed, but I seem to remember reading that. I don't think he was. So, if you want to learn how to ink more, I would definitely recommend that you take the opportunity to practice. Get a brush, get a brush pen like this. You can even do it with a marker pen, like a Tombow pen or something like that and uh, I recommend you start learning by drawing with the brush or the tool and I think you'll get a lot out of that and you'll learn a lot about the tool and its limitations and what you're trying to accomplish I would also say pick also pick a style that you're shooting for an inking approach or style look so that way you can stumble upon the things that make that happen as you get as you go along in that journey, you'll also learn that there are opportunities to uh, to create new looks, or even you'll discover how other looks were created, and sometimes by the same way you're working. So, definitely recommend that. 
Bum, 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 Yeah, so my daughter's been sick. She has the flu. And uh, I've been taking medicine. They have me on Tamiflu just in case. And oh my gosh, tons of stuff. And uh, I get to see my doctor this week. I'm excited about that to cover some new medications that I can use that I think will help me. And um, yeah, what are you going to do? Make Miles happy. All right, so again, when I'm drawing Conan, I'm not thinking about making him too pretty. I'm not making him like a, um, um, AWAB says, Amar, how are you doing? And this drawing was brought to you by Drawing with the Jerk. <laughs> nice. Um, I'm the new Bob Ross from Modern Day Love. <laughs> Modern Day. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not Bob Ross, man. I appreciate that, though. Bum, 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 bum. I love it. I love it. I love it, Warren. Alex, how are you, man? What's going on? Alex Milne in the house. Hey, Ellie, I'm glad I can catch this show. Right on. Thank you for stopping by, brother. I appreciate you. All right. So I like to draw Conan when I do. Uh, when I do, I like to draw him with the, like I said, the, the busted broken nose. Right? Like he's been fighting a bunch of things. Like he's been bashing his face on the wall for a while. But I also like to give him a few scars. I kind of imagine that Conan hasn't, one of the things that makes Conan Conan, he's not a perfect dude. Um, and every, what makes him great now is that he's, he's learned from all these lessons, right? So I like to give him a, a little more character in his face. Dun, 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 all right. So I don't know if you guys are excited this week. Star Wars. <laughs> Did I say anything bad? <laughs> oh, who's gonna go see it? Who's gonna go see? Who's gonna brave the theaters? Who's gonna check it out? <laughs> Oh Lord, uh oh, uh oh! Don't forget, guys. This is a copy of How to Draw Comics from Marvel. This is part of a giveaway I'm going to be doing here. Uh, when I'm done with this drawing, I'll be sending this book out uh, as soon as possible. Hopefully, sooner than later, to a lucky member in my audience here today. Um, we're going to do it kind of like the way we do it over on Mike's auction. I'm going to kind of let you guys do something I'll pick randomly, as randomly as I possibly can. And then we'll go from there. So don't forget, guys, uh, while I have your attention, to check out Doom Kicker over on Indiegogo. For those of you who haven't purchased it, it is still available. Uh, if you know of anyone that might be interested in that book, um, you guys kind of know what you kind of see some of the images flashing from my concept stuff for the campaign. Um, you guys can share that with them and that's awesome if you don't mind sharing it over on facebook share it on twitter share it on and wherever you go wherever you spend your time with social medias please uh, share it but also i have some other friends that are doing books uh brian shearer who's my partner over on a show that we do every thursday at 9 30 and by the way this will be this thursday will probably be the last one because next week is christmas so uh, we also do something called um paranormals where Brian and I uh, give our, our, our take on, on some paranormal news that we encounter along the way. And also, also um, <laughs> paranormal in the real world, uh, the WTF section of the New York Post. But uh, other than that, he also has a book called Gunship Thunder Punch on Indiegogo. So if you guys don't mind checking that out, I, it wouldn't hurt you at all. And uh, checking it out is free. Uh, buying it is not but if you do decide give him a spin man he's doing great work over there he shares with me quite a bit and i'm i'm super blessed that he's my boy my brother and uh that we're in, on this journey together all right so let's see uh, da, da, da. you can see that this paper is so thin that the ink is coming through so be careful but that's okay it makes this a special cover a special copy right like I said, I might do this again. We'll see if I can afford it to go out and buy some more of the books, but um, this is kind of fun. It's fun because this is 
this was the book that kind of set me on track for drawing anything in, of, of this nature so um, if you guys are this is kind of a fun way to kind of honor John Buscema who was basically my, my one of my first and earliest comic book teachers and, and just not actually but through through reviewing his work and also to draw Conan which was one of his favorite characters to draw so I want to just honor the myth the man the legend uh, with this right here but anyway um, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Christina Lynn says are Bill Cosby Michael Caine and Uncle Julio having Christmas party this week I can't say for sure but I'm going to say this though this will be the Christmas episode uh, so prepare yourselves for all the holly and the jolly that you can possibly have uh, da -da -da. all right so I do a lot of pulling for my lines I find that it gives me the, the thinnest special lines but you really could do whatever so I want to go ahead and ink in here in his brow so that you get a little more weight to the shelf of his brow so you gotta feel the strength of that uh, Tough Nerd Toy says do you like Frank Frazetta I love Frank Frazetta I have a bunch of books of his as well some are some are old school books that are of value some are most of them are modern it was hard to get his books although I have all the old uh, the books that I forget what they were called it wasn't print it was something else it was called Frazetta something and anyway, I get those as well all right dun 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 you'll see me do these draw these same kind of lines on Batman it's for the same reason I always feel like those characters probably have a lifetime of battery like how does Bruce Wayne get away with that you know he gets his face kicked in all the time are there people who don't like Frank Frazetta says Cosmetti no I don't know they might be I suspect not just to give the universe benefit of the doubt all right what do you guys think how we feel about this how we feeling dog is hiding under my tip my desk it's all right girl you'll be all right all right looks cool this is cool all right well let's not stop here let's draw something else why not how about how about I draw dun 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 let's draw the Hulk Hulk's another one of my favorite guys that Buscema would draw I like to draw him a little more a little more raging you know what I mean a little more crazy a little more cray cray <laughs> what's wrong with me what is wrong with me he also has a Neanderthalic brow Let's separate his eyes a little more because he's the Hulk. I like to also shorten up his nose. If Conan has a longer nose, Hulk has angry nose. It's like a short, stocky nose. Also a, a good look for monsters and ruffians and stuff, stuff, sh sort of stuff. We need to send Bill Cosby a fruitcake with a sh <laughs> Well, I think Bill can handle himself. He's having an amazing time. That's what he says. Let's see, let's see. Is Spider-Man in, in the new Star Wars? I'm not going to the theater if there is no Spider-Man. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not seeing Spider-Man either. I'm done with Spider-Man. I'm done with all these guys. I don't know. Am I really done with those guys? All right. Hulk smash! My favorite Hulk is the crazy hair Savage Hulk from the 80s. 
mainly the one with the wicked eyebrows. That's my favorite. All right, let's ink this guy. Uh, well, I'll use a different tool for inking him. How about that? So that way you can kind of see different styles. Does that help? Is that cool? No? I have here a Kurotake uh, Fudogoki. Fudogoki Koki. <laughs> I don't got it. I don't got it all covered, guys. I do the best that I can, and that's all I got. I'm doing it this way because he's a little smaller in that area of the, of the, the page. This is an okay one. I bought this one on a, on, as an experiment. It's, it's not a bad pen. Um, like I said, I don't remember what it's called. It's got a harder tip. Which so far, it's done, it's holding up, which I gotta say, for these kinds of pens, they don't always do well with, with abuse, but I've, I've done some abusive drawing with this and it's holding up pretty well. Uh, is the present in another Cosby's in the present? Oh, okay, 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 okay. You guys are taking this, don't worry, don't worry about it. It's, 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 I don't mean to insult the gentleman. I'm sure he's got, uh, Stuff we gotta handle. Oops. It's popping off. Oh, it's popping off. Oh. Da 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 Hulk smash! Hulk hate peanut butter. Hulk hate Conan. Do you guys remember the old Mego figures? Mego. I always wanted the Conan one, although he had really weird doll hair. I didn't like that part. And uh, I always liked the Hulk. I never had a real one. I always had my cousin's beat up one. I've never really had too many of those. I had a. Mego, Captain Kirk, and Spock. That's about it. And they were great. But, uh, alas. Again, a lot of this is a lot of flicking to get the thick and thin. I'm throwing those lines a little differently than I would be. Come on, stay on. What's wrong with you? I don't like that. I don't like when a pen doesn't a pen doesn't cap doesn't post as well as it should. It drives me crazy. All right, I'm gonna switch over to the brush now so I can get. There's no reason to draw a bunch of black shapes when you can just ink them in with a brush. something else too. I'm going to cover up this right here. I probably shouldn't have drawn that. Oh well. Alright, so pretty cool. Pretty cool. All right, so what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna draw in a couple of specks for his eyes with white. It's way cooler, way cooler. I like that much more. All right, all right, I think that's pretty cool. You get two drawings in the book on this side. I'm gonna go ahead and sign it. Let's go ahead and sign it right here. And, um, All right, all right. Well, so that's that. Uh, why don't we go ahead and let's start this. So we have two different giveaways I'm doing here. Now there's only 43 of you guys. You see what happened? People didn't want to wait. They didn't want to wait. There's a the Hank 
warm up that I want to give away. And this book, How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way. Like I said, guys, I really want to give this to someone who, who, uh, well, you can do whatever you want, I guess. Um, but if you are interested in doing, you know, you have a person in your life that this can really help, I really recommend it. And if you don't want to give this away, um, like I said, go to Five Below, pick up your copy for five bucks and give this to one of your family, the, the, the young kid or the, the novice artist, the, 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 the budding one. Give them this at least to look at and, and it doesn't cost you much. It's a great stocking stuff if nothing else. Um, I'll draw comics tomorrow away. And here is the art. Da, 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 There's the Hulk. Let me put it back towards the light. And Conan. Dun 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 dun. All right. Tough Nurse says I will cherish the book. <laughs> like I said, guys, uh, it's uh, free shipping in uh, in the United States. Um, but I also, if you're out of the United States, I'm just going to ask you to have to cover shipping because I can't afford that much in the way of shipping. Uh, so let's start with, let's start with the book. If uh, you are interested in participating in this, just go ahead and let's see, what, what can we put in the, the thing? Um, type Conan, C-O-N-A-N, -N, Conan in the... Uh, in the chat and uh, this you'll be we'll, we'll let you guys do it for a couple minutes for about a minute or so 30 seconds or so just type Conan and then I'll do a random thing and then we'll go from there all right all right we got some Conan 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 all right there's only 46 of you here uh, again I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you can put as many times as you want. <laughs> Tough nerds get in there. All right. Uh, let's give me I'll give you guys a, about 30 more seconds. Let's do it like that. Uh, thank you guys so much for hanging in there with me. Don't forget to check out Doom Kicker over on Indiegogo and we'll go from there. All right. I'm going to start scrolling up, scrolling up and down and see where my, my, my thing lands. Da -da 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 -da. Da -da -da -da. My cursor lands right then. Uh, cryptic collectibles, cryptic collectibles. You are the lucky winner. Cryptic collectibles. If you want, you can go ahead and uh, send me, um, send it to uh, Elliot at jerkmongerart.com. Elliot at, jer I'll just type it in. At jerkmongerart. Dot com and this was uh cryptic collectibles all right there we go so send me the uh don't forget to send me your your uh your shipping information and then we can go from there Woo! good job good job good job you got it cryptic all right cryptic you're not eligible for this next one this is the sketch i did uh, the Hank Doom Kicker sketch, warm-up sketch I did recently. I'm going to go ahead and do this as a giveaway as well because it's Christmas. And uh, no, it's because I love you guys and I appreciate you guys. And so, you know, whatever. Um, so go ahead, if you don't mind, and in the chat, go ahead and put the word Hank. Hank, and I'll let that go for about 60 seconds. We'll go from there. I'll start from the minute you guys get on there. I got, I got kinds of music in my head. I just made that up. I just hold that whole thing scored by me. Me. I just did that. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Looking for 30 more seconds, 30 more seconds. 78 minutes, I've been on for 78 minutes, yikers. No bueno, no bueno, I don't like it. I've been on too long. <laughs> yes, Art of the Hero, I'm still, my, I'm still alive, Mike, I'm doing a giveaway. Type in the word Hank and you will win this warm-up sketch of Doom Kicker. All right, here we go. 
I'm gonna do it like Mike does it. He, I'm gonna do it different. I'm gonna do it the, the jerk monger way. I'm just gonna close my eyes. Here we go. I'm, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm going crazy. I'm flicking upside, up and down. My eyes are completely closed. You can see my eyes are completely closed. And I'm going here and I'm going this way and that way and this way and this way and that way and that way and da 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 da. Da. Oh. I went too far down. And then click on anything. Farmer Dan, you are the winner of the Doom Kicker warm up sketch of Hank. Bam! Farmer Dan. So I'm going to put in here, same thing for you. At Farmer Dan. Email me at Elliot. Here we go. At jerk art dot com. That's it. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. All right. So I'm gonna make sure I list that here. This goes to Farmer Dan. Uh, giveaway. Like I said, if you are in the continental United States, uh, you uh, don't worry about shipping. Um, but if you are overseas, please make sure to send me your funds. Uh, and this goes to Cryptic Collectibles. I really appreciate it, guys. Thanks so much for hanging out with me tonight. Uh, I want to also remind you guys to check out uh, Gunship Thunder Punch over on... on uh, on Indiegogo, check out Doom Kicker over on Indiegogo. I can't think of anybody else's books. Don't forget to watch Doug Knapel. Uh, don't forget to check into this. If you guys can, um, give this a look. This is one of my favorite books that Doug ever did, and this is this is um, this one. This one made me a, a, a lifelong fan from now on. So anyway, appreciate that. Um, check out Mike S. Miller's uh, 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 Lone Star. Check out. Gosh, uh, Brand is coming out soon. I can't, I can't think of anybody. Uh, uh, this is me and Brian. We, we, he's my, my, my teammate. Uh, it says it, on my page here, it says Twitter. I'm not on Twitter, so ignore that. But you can find me over on uh, uh, on Patreon under Elliot Fernandez Art. You can also find me on Instagram under Elliot Fernandez underscore art. And on YouTube here under the Elliot Fernandez or Jerkmonger and I will see you guys really soon. If I don't see you guys, I should I'm gonna try to come out here a couple more times. But for those of you who don't come back to talk to me again, have a Merry Christmas. And uh I'll try to holler at you guys later. Peace out. God bless you guys. I love you all. Laters.